Hello, do you like New Japan Pro Wrestling? Are you a Shin Nihon freak? If so, check out the Super Jcast with Joel and Damon on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. And even if you fucking hate New Japan Pro Wrestling, listen to the Super Jcast anyway. Not just for our great show reviews, analysis, and pastrami sandwiches, mm-hmm. but there's also usually some dick jokes somewhere in the obligatory opening 30 minutes of absolute nonsense we chat about every single week. That's the Super Jcast for all all the best talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, crisps, and pornography. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super Jacks. I'm Joel, joined by Damon McDonald. It is Wednesday the 16th of October 2024. This is episode 332. How are you doing Damon? We're good. We're busy and excited and fun and renewed energies for a product that we all love. Um, yeah, I think uh, can't complain, right? Can't complain. I think we're on a, I think we're on a good path. I know we're on a good path. I feel we're on a good path. And uh, I think there's plenty to be excited about. It's night and day, isn't it, from just a vibes check. The vibes after, I just keep going back to it, that horrible new beginning show where they brought in Matt Riddle and um, Nick Nemeth. And we were mm-hmm. just like, oh, what? What is going on? It's amazing how it's flipped. And here's the thing though, like, like we've kind of hinted at it and talked about it. And, but I think a blind person can say that this, you know, it's, it's the voices in the room. It's the people who have the, 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 the stroke and it's the people who, you know, have finally said, you know, it, I, I guess they thought that this is, this would like that they, maybe they had more of a name than, they th- I don't I don't know, but it is a complete about face, and I love it. And I love the fact that they have guts in the sense of okay, and this is always a New Japan thing. Like this is the plan. We have a plan. We trust in the plan. Let's move forward. Let's let's push ahead. Now that's not to say that they haven't slightly pivoted or. Are can it at least acknowledge things that might be a little astray and maybe course correct? But overall, it feels like you know we've mapped it out. This is the way we're going. Come aboard, um, and I feel it too. Like I feel the I feel the I don't know. I feel like this got a little bit more buzz. I feel like we're, people are chit chatting about it. People are excited about it, and I, I mean that's all you can ask for, really, right? I mean, like, we're not making money off of New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, we're not getting a paycheck. So, like, houses and merch sales and all that stuff, that's just us kind of reading the tea leaves. But overall, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited just at the, at the possibilities and where we're going and who's doing what. And again, we're going to get deep into it here tonight. But I'm excited, man. I'm, I haven't been this excited in a long time. And uh, it feels feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. I don't have any major complaints, really. I Not really. It's important to, to to celebrate that because I could pick like my least favorite thing or least favorite direction coming out of King of Pro Wrestling. And even then, like you can make the case for it. It's not like the kind of what the fuck is this company doing? Like mental brainworm madness that we've had. Just even mere months ago. Yeah. No, you're exactly right, man. It's, it's, it, I don't know. Look, it, it's, are there things that I prefer? Of course. Are there things that I wish went in a different direction? Yes. But I think overall, you're right. You can make an argument for every single decision that came out of this King of Pro Wrestling show. And, uh, 
you know, I don't think there's too many bad ones. You know what I mean? Mm, like you can see the long-term vision. You can see the logic behind it, even yeah. if it's not to your personal taste. And it's New Japan-centric. Like, it doesn't feel like we're relying on outside forces to a, to a large... Now, again, that could change. You know, listen, this, we all... Like I say, I'm excited, and I feel like we're we're on the right path in all this. But I say that with a fucking big time asterisk, in the sense of it could go all tits up in, in a fucking heartbeat. But right now, ah, I'm I'm really happy. I'm really truly happy that it feels like we're 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 moving in the right direction. And here's the thing too: like I get. The idea of, well, where's my fucking pull down my pants and jack off matches, you know, like where. And I think like, I don't know, sometimes I think sometimes I wonder if like if that era didn't happen, would we be so hard pressed to say, oh, but where's our 900 star match? And, and because I think every match was was at least good. I mean, there were a couple that fucking, you know, I could have done that. But by and large, I thought everything was good. I don't know if we had that monumental, just earth moving fucking match. I don't think we need it. I'm not complaining if we get it, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I don't, I think my, at least my feelings of watching New Japan Pro Wrestling isn't about, isn't so much of, oh, I just need that, that, unbelievable mind-blowing match and i need that on every show and i think i kind of am in the, in the field of uh, give me a give me a, a great match give me everything you got right like please you know don't fucking dog it for me like like i matter but please don't dog it for me and give me things that as a pro wrestling fan i can sink my teeth into less goofiness less Outside, and I'm going to say outside interference. You, I, you know what I don't mean, and what I do mean <laughs> um, from you know other promotions and other like. I just want we got to concentrate on fucking building our foundation and, and writing our path. And I think at least in the past couple of months, it's felt a thousand percent like we're on the right course. So I don't think you can ask for much more. Because eventually, I think eventually everything else will catch up with it. Like everything else will fall into place as long as we're doing, we're laying the groundwork. Everything else will fall into place. So I can't complain. I cannot complain. So this will be a non-complaint show f- littered with complaints. <laughs> That's what we'll do. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it then. Uh, so the King of Pro Wrestling show from Rio Koku- Kokugi Kan. First thing I want to mention was the rather bizarre comeback of yo so normally in new japan when there's a wrestler who's suffered an injury and has been on the shelf for a while they get a big angle to return they'll do you know a run in or appear to challenge at the end but yo showed up outside the arena and then started running around and screaming yeah in front of all the fans and he appeared in like a three second backstage promo where he sort of hovering past the camera a bit like going, moving all sideways like a crab, making funny noises. What? It, is he okay? I'm, <laughs> I don't know what... <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure what, what, what's going on there. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Okay, so we started out with, oh, all the praise and all the flowers. <laughs> all right. Okay, you're, this was a head scratcher. I'm not going to lie. Um, it didn't do him any favors in my eyes, to be frank. It didn't really feel like something that uh, I'm going to gravitate to. And it was weird. Uh, that's your boy. Yeah, you know, like, like him and Watto and, you know, all that, that, that whole crew. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, don't I, know. I think comparing him to Watto is important. Like we will come on to Watto, but Watto coming back with a big, comeback angle where he's running down and saving um, Doki from the attack of the House mm-hmm. of Torture and he looks at, well I was going to say a million bucks <laughs> but we won't go that far but he's you know looking good and everyone's cheering and it's exciting and he's going straight into a big title challenge yeah 
that is very, very different to what Yo did. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, but again, just a returning guy. It's just, and he's and he's a guy that just always struggles with me. So, um, I don't know. He just likes to be a weird. I don't know. I I don't know. I, I mean, look, that's it. I think even he just enjoys being a weirdo. He just likes being a weirdo, and that's fine. Be a weirdo. I. But here's the thing: like, be a weirdo at, at your on your own fucking time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't waste my time being a fucking weirdo. Do, you know, if you want to run around outside fucking sumo hall, great. I don't know if I need to see it on my broadcast. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, it was just weird. Whatever. Uh, I, like, honestly, until you brought it up, I, I don't even think I remembered it. Truthfully. It was, it was like, it felt like, so, like it was just like one of those head scratchers that you're just like, mm, okay, all right, let's move on. And yeah, if, if, <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, I, I guess my point is this is like, one, how does this help anyone get over? And two, wh- what, what, where are we going with that? <laughs> I guess so. Like, I'll, I'll lean on you on that. Like, well, like, is it, it again? He's got to go to somebody to be like, okay, here's my idea, or somebody's got to come to him and be like, okay, here's the idea. Like, huh. I'll tell you, all right, this reminds me. Right, so when I uh, observe other teachers and their lessons are shit. I won't say their shit. I'll just sit them down in the feedback afterwards and be like, okay, so talk me through what you did there. Like explain your, your <laughs> rationale behind what you did. Like what, what did you think you were hoping to achieve with, with this thing from oh, shit? So that's what I'd be doing with you. I'd be like, so just talk me through your process here. What, yeah. what is this? And what were you hoping to achieve by it? <laughs> Cause right. like, there's probably very little logic behind it. It was probably like three minutes before they, they were like, all right, listen, we got a, a window here where we can do something. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. I'll just run around. All, all right. We're on in three seconds. <laughs> and, and that was it. You know, I hope that was it because it, it didn't make any sense. Yeah. I would, I would need to have a sit down and be like, okay, so what the fuck are we doing here? Um, I mean, right, it, I don't want to him, right? If, if his, his return, like, so he's coming back in super junior tag league and again, we'll, we'll come on to that, but he is teaming up with uh, Rocky. So they might have said to him, look, yo, you're coming back. You're going to be appearing in the Super Junior Tag League with Rocky. Rocky's not here. Uh, you're not challenging for any titles. <laughs> what do you want to do? And then he probably thought about that. Uh, maybe, maybe the best I can do with that is just running around screaming outside the buildings. <laughs> they didn't give him much to work with, to be fair. Right. Uh, I'd be curious to... to, to I, I couldn't think of it. With my best um, fantasy booking hat on, I'm not sure I could come up with a compelling angle on the show for I'm back and I'm going into Super Junior Tag League with Rocky who's not here right now. I you know, honestly if they just did a literally did that ex- those exact words on in a video package I think it would have been much more clear and less what the fuck am I watching? But whatever. I here's the thing, we're spending 5 minutes at least talking about this nonsense. So maybe, uh, right. Sorry, right. But, right. right, but maybe, I mean, would we spend five minutes talking about him if he just did a fucking video little package thing? Maybe not. No, no, good point. So, you know, maybe he's, you know, maybe he's, again, we're all sitting here scratching our fe- our heads, collective heads, like, what the fuck did I just see? And maybe that was the point. He is, a, he is an artsy kind of guy. Like, he's the kind of guy that's going to be like, yeah, man, fuck him. Idols is my favorite band, and I like, I like, I like to hang out in coffee shops, man. Free trade coffee, of course. I don't. Why am I talking? Yeah, about this is real sort of Roland Bart, uh, death of the author stuff. He's like, I'm going to run around screaming, and the fans are going to fill in the gaps and <laughs> make their own meaning from this. Yeah. All right, Radiohead. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, good attendance for the show, 6,211. This is below Sacro Genesis, so it's about 400 fewer tickets than Sacro Genesis sold, which was, that was Naito and Suji on, on top of that, if I remember correctly. However, it is 1,200 more than last year's King of Pro Wrestling, which I think was Sanada Evil, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So whilst it's not the best number they've done at Sumo Hall this year, that's pretty strong. That's a healthy number, right? I, you know, I'm not going to be busting out the champagne, but I think that is a, a nice data point that supports this 
trend of an upward trajectory for New Japan Pro Wrestling? Oh, I think so. I don't. Th- I mean, if anybody's like sitting here trying to poke poke holes in it, you know, well, I just would have to say, <laughs> relax a little bit. Yeah, I mean, fourteen hundred more is fourteen hundred more. Again, I don't know what the rents are or anything, or what the fucking profit margin is on what building. I don't know, but I, like any every indication I've had was that the company was pretty happy with what was going on. So, and again, I think like this is the rebuilding and the long term vision that I think we were all just crying for post COVID. It just, it's taken such a long time, though, to, to, to get to where we are right now, this feeling of, of uh, a ship being rightened. Uh, I, I'm happy with the number. i got to be honest with you. And I'm sure there was t- tickets were a little bit pricier. Um, yeah. No complaints. Let's, let's, uh, let's celebrate this one. I, I'm, I'm not, again, not popping champagne, but I think everyone at the office is giving each other little head nods of, all right, all right, let's keep the momentum going. I, th- I think that's cracking open, really Zima. cracking open a Zima. That's that's worth. This was worthy of cracking open a Zima. We're not getting out the Dom, the Zima. Correct. First match then was uh, Hiromu Takahashi defeating Mystico in eight minutes and one second with his submission move, which he's now calling Maximum the Holding MTH. So that's a name given by uh, Daisuke Han of uh, a, a mu- music group called Maximum the Hormone. So we had uh, the, the LIJ branded rice cooker being debuted here. We had the um, the the lucha horns, you know, like oh, the, yeah, the, 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 the wolves or wolves or whatever the fuck they're called. Those and horns. all the little touches that like the, the Spanish time counts cinco minuto, like, and I'm imagining the, the you know the Stephanie McMahon wrinkling her nose because she's just said gracias at a Spanish restaurant <laughs> when I heard that. But uh, yeah, this yeah, this match was a bit strange like, I, I thought it was good I think Hiromu worked well he's a good base for Mystico and all the the spinning shit that he does and you know he took some big bumps as well Hiromu but this, this is going to be a really bizarre reference that no one else will understand but in the, the game Virtual Fighter 2 when you get to the final stage and you face the final boss Jarrell the stage is underwater so you fight it underwater and it's like all the normal um, fighting mechanics of Virtual Fighter 2 but it's all in slow motion because, you know, the logic being that you're fighting underwater. That's what this match was like. It felt mm. like like a normal match, but it was wrestled underwater. So just a, a very smooth, but also extremely slow. Yeah. And it got a little bit sloppy down the stretch. There were a couple of moments towards the end where I wasn't sure who was doing the move to whom. But, you know, putting that all aside, like perfectly fine opener. And I think the significance of this for Hiromu getting a submission win over Mystico, a guy who does not lose very often. That is a big feather in his cap. And there was a lot of talk backstage afterwards about what the next step is. Cause I think they have is one win each plus a draw, if I'm not mistaken. So they're, they're talking about having a mask versus hair match as a, a follow up. So he probably suggested that for next year's CMLL anniversary show in arena Mexico, which uh, is that's, that could be massive. You know, I don't, I can't foresee Mystico losing his mask. Right. I'm not getting my head in myself sort of previewing a match that, you know, has not been announced yet. But Hiromu getting his hair cut, I mean, that carries with it its own cultural significance in New Japan of, you know, going back to your young lion days and all that, which we've seen sort of recently with Yu Uemura. Yeah. And, you know, that that would feel quite big for Hiromu to be shaving his hair. And again, this is not happening anytime soon. But... I complained about Hiromu and how stale he felt earlier in the year, but now there's some little changes here, an interesting direction, and you know we're still not quite sure where we're at with Hiromu. I was fairly convinced that he was heading for Naito for Wrestle Kingdom, but now Hiromu's entering Super Junior Tag League with right. Bushi, which you know that does not that's not usually a signifier of having a, a huge singles match at Wrestle Kingdom um, entering Super Junior Tag League. So a lot of uncertainty around Hiromu, but in in a cool way. Like there's a few different directions for him, and I find them all quite interesting. Much more interesting than you know had he been in the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title scene. Yeah, um, it is. 
I don't know. I, I felt like I was uh, left a little bit with. So he gets the he gets the win, which I think to me at the time when he got the the submission, I'm thinking, okay, so let's just say that this was a exclamation point on him kind of mopping up all the juniors that are left, right? Like all the people that might be considered world talent juniors. And this might be just me fucking going, you know, on my own little fantasy booking cycle here, but that's kind of what I felt. And then the, the talk after the match and, you know, Hey, we're going to run it back and blah, blah, blah. I was a little bit, not disturbed, but I was just kind of like the same things that you're saying in the sense of, okay, uh, does that mean we're not grad? And I use graduating and I don't like using it, but we're going to say graduating to a heavy. So we're not doing that. Or maybe it's kind of this in between <laughs> never open weight kind of thing. I don't know. And it did put doubts in my mind about the idea of Naito at the Dome. Now, they could still. Sorry, my friend, right? Mr. Coat is a heavyweight, isn't he? <sighs> yes and no. I think in some people's eyes, he is. And in some people's eyes, he isn't. Like, he's, he's a title holder, isn't he? Is he like the middleweight champion or something in CML at the moment? I think so, yeah. 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 But would you consider him a heavy? Uh, yes, I think I would. Okay. See, I kind of, I don't know. Uh, better question. What does New Japan think of him? I don't think they consider him a heavy. I, I, don't, do I, I don't know. I've not got any evidence to suggest that he's a junior. I have no evidence to suggest that he's a heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's wrestling a junior. So I'm assuming right. he's a junior. Yeah. But at least that's what New Japan thinks of him. And as I'm, yeah. I'm saying junior, and, I'm, and it's like, you know, this is not like saying like he's a piece of shit, you know, like, but, you know, <laughs> if we're going to put people in categories and buckets, you know, I, I think New Japan thinks of him as a junior. Okay. So he, I, can't, yeah, I can't really argue that because, I mean, the most recent evidence we got is him teaming with Taguchi on a load of untelevised shows. Right. So. All right, look, let's just let's just say that he's a junior and he missed the, he, he gets beat. So what they do in Mexico Arena though is is significantly different than what they do in Cork and Hall. So the idea of him having a main event, you know, and and with a feeling of heavyweight or middleweight or whatever the fuck you want to go with it, fine. I'm, I'm like like just let's just I'm going to put that aside. I think a more significant thing that you mentioned, and I was not aware of, by the way, is the idea of if they do run it back, they, they there's a possibility of mask versus hair. And to me, Hiromo losing and, and getting a little haircut feels like a symbolic gesture of I'm wiping the slate clean. And I'm um, coming back with a little bit something else. Again, does yeah. that mean you can't have him shave his head and then just grow out again with the red streaks and just go back to being right. the same as Romy? Right. So I feel like, and again, you go on that magical mystery tour of fucking Mexico and you come back with something fresh and new. And we've seen it countless times with New Japan pro wrestlers. Again, if when is that Arena Mexico show? Because because here's the thing too. I, I, obviously, it's not going to be in time for the dome, so to speak. Um, no, it's usually late September. I think is their anniversary. Right. So that's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's like a year yeah, from now. Year right. Yes. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But now, okay, but now does that put a little bit of a wet blanket on, on people's Hiromu Naito idea? It, it's just vague enough and tantalizing enough to 
for you to be able to squint and see it either way, isn't it? Like you could say, oh, well, you know, that's in a year, he's going to be on a completely different trajectory and reinventing himself. So yeah, you can make the case for this being a piece of evidence that yes, he is going to face Naito, but equally you could, you could not do that. So again, right. death of the author. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think I, once again, I think we're left with a lot more questions than answers and we can fantasy book till the fucking cows come home. But at the end of the day, like to, the feeling I got after this match was done was I've beaten what New Japan considers a top international junior and I'm moving on. Post-match comments might change that, right? my idea of that. But that's what I got. And you're right. I, I have a little note here. Uh, was, I, I have a, was someone injured? That's literally my note. Um, just because you're right, it did feel like like even though there were things going on in the match, I I felt like there was a gear that was missing, right? Like like a pace. Not necessarily my enjoyment of the match. Not necessarily the making it bad or good. But a, there was a weird pace where it felt like there was a gear that we were fucking missing, and and maybe once again I associate that with more a, a junior balls of the wall thing uh, as opposed to a little bit more not for lack of a better term slower pace um, and it wasn't like they were grabbing holds but yeah it just felt like like just somebody was hurt or somebody wasn't up to it or I don't know what it was match was good but yeah there was something missing when it came to to a pace that I thought I was getting that it didn't materialize mm. no biggie no biggie. But yeah, I think, like I said, I think I'm, I was left a little bit more with more questions specifically about Hiromu than just about anybody else on the show. Second match was the IWGP Junior Tag Championship match where the challengers, intergalactic jet setters, Kevin Knight and Kushida, defeated the champions, Driller Maloney and Clark Connors in 12 minutes, 23 seconds. So Kevin Knight pinned Driller following a, a jackknife pin. Oh, I thought this was great. One of my favorite matches yeah. of the night. Um, now, I kind of, I don't, maybe wasn't really fair on intergalactic jet setters, sort of hand wave at the challenge, but they really impressed me here. Like much better presentation, much better synergy, even little things like Kushida having a jet pack and then having, you know, matching orange gear. So I watched this and then came out of it thinking, I mean, changed my thoughts, changed my, changed my perception of intergalactic jet setters. Really happy to see them win, not, just as a showcase for Kevin Knight, but just as a, a really good tag team that is delivering on its own terms in a pretty healthy division. I mean, the, the division, I think, is fairly stacked. We'll look at the the blocks for the, the tag league in a moment, but I thought they looked really great here. I enjoyed the match. There were some spectacular early spots, the, the chair spots, and Kevin Knight, man, just the, the, that flying double foot stomp he did, like the hang time he gets on his moves, is incredible. So it's just really compelling sort of chemistry between the the uh, explosive power of the War Dogs and the high flying creativity of the Jet Setters, and Kushida and Kevin Knight really start to complement each other and, and accentuate each other's strengths and their differences, being and a part part of the fun to watch in, in a way that I don't think it had been in their previous matches. And I thought Clark Connors was really impressive here as well. Like his snap power slam, his jeep flip. So absolutely sick. Like when you get someone who can bump for them and fly around the ring, he just looks like, I, I love a junior heavyweight powerhouse and just seeing him sort of go to town like that was a lot of fun to watch. But, um, you know, back to Kevin Knight, who is the guy who I've been flying the flag for for years. He's, he's already given the fact that he doesn't appear in Japan that frequently. He's got an incredible crowd connection. Like the fans love him already. And he's still, you know, he's not the finished article. I thought, he got a bit lost in the middle. He slipped off the top rope. I just think he needs more high level matches to fix that. Cause just looking at the, his output this year, he's just kind of not really been doing much, which makes me scratch my head and think, well, why not? Why isn't someone booking this guy regularly? And I hope it, you know, New Japan can start doing it with a bit more regularity because there's so much upside there. And I really bought that near fall towards the end where it looked like 
the Warden's were about to get a, another very dominant win. And and they've had a great reign, which we need to tell our hat to because that made this title change seem like a big deal and a big achievement for intergalactic jet setters because War Dogs has just done such great work with the belts this year. But my biggest takeaway for this is why can't we have more junior tag title matches? Because they've been, they, they, again, again, it's such a stacked division. I would just love to see it showcased a bit more. But great match, great finish, really creative. I like the blind tag and um, showcasing Kevin Knight's athleticism, doing that jackknife pin at the end. And I do feel like between these two teams, they've got another match in them. And not to say this one wasn't good, but I think they could take it to another level. So really happy to see Kevin Knight with some gold around his waist again. And um, some very, really nice backstage comments from um, Clark and Driller afterwards where they're saying that losing the titles has now made them more dangerous. They're saying it's loosened their collars. Now they're hungry war dogs. They're on the hunt for the next meal, which is an exciting thought going into Super Junior Tag League. I would do anything, just about anything, Name the price to to have these teams who we have praised for how many fucking shows. Uh, well, let, let, all right, I'll finish this thought first. Um, I would do anything to have this be the heavyweight tag champion feud. Like, I think these two teams, if you put them in any other company, that's what we would we would be doing. And unfortunately, as much as I love the idea of New Japan Pro Wrestling and the history and the prestige and all of that when it comes to juniors, this is where you get a little bit handcuffed. Because I think if you put this anywhere else, this would be for the for the main tag titles. Um Kushida deserves all the credit in the world. Because trust me, it's not like we haven't sat here and figured, well, it looks like he's washed. Right. Um, he is such a talented pro wrestler that even years of the fucking abuse of WWE uh, couldn't put a damper on him in this match. Kevin Knight, look, I was thrilled that they got the titles because at least that means they've committed for, you know, however much commitment you want to give to a junior tag team. Uh New Japan is committed to say, okay, we're going to have you see, we're going to see at least one more time, right? I think it'll be more than that, and it should be, but at least there was that. So thrilled with that. Um, I think War Dogs were, that was a great run. And I think th- that team specifically is vastly underrated. And I think we'll get votes for Tag Team of the Year. Uh, I, I, and I think tag team of the year, when we talk about awards and all that shit, like I think the majority of them are going to be coming from junior, right? A lot to dip your, dip your, dip your toes in. And I think war dogs are fucking leading the way. Um, I thought the match was really good. Yes, there were some slip ups. Yes, there was. But I don't know. I, I, I like these two teams together. I think they have really good chemistry. Um, I think all four of them are incredibly fucking talented. And like I said, to me, like, once again, I understand why we can't. And I understand why we won't. But, like, if we just didn't have those, those junior handcuffs, this this would be for, for the, the world titles. And I don't think anybody would complain. And I don't think anybody, because here's the thing, too. Kevin Knight, anywhere else. You know, again, when when he's on New Japan shows, I know they had the little tournament in Philly and, uh, you know, Mike Bailey was involved. You know, I understand that. But like that, at least in the States, that line is so blurred between juniors and heavies that it it, it would work. And we all know fucking Maloney. uh, You know, it's that's a joke, too. So, again, just the optics of it. It's just we have to we're going to put you in, in, in this category and it's hard to break out of that. So, uh, one of my favorite matches of the night. And I, the good news is, is that Kevin Knight and Kushida have titles. So we'll see him again. I'm, 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 I'm there for it. Looks good. And let's have a quick look at the super junior tag league. So we've got two blocks at so a block, Ushi and Hiromu, captain Suicida and Tiger Musk. Clark Connors and Driller Maloney, Dragon Diet and Yusuke Taguchi, 
Kosei, Fujita and Robbie Eagles, Sho and Kanemaru. And then in B block, we've got DKC and Ninja Mac, Catch 2-2, two two, Akira and TJP. We have the Velocities coming from Australia, Jude London and Paris De Silva, which uh, if you were part of the Delhi, you would have known about months ago. Kevin Knight and Kushida, Rocky and Yo, and Ishimori with his mystery partner X. So that looks like a lot of fun to me, and again, speaks volumes about the depth of this division. It's always better than World Tag League, right? Or, you know, have you, it's always better. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a sexy lineup to me. I'm, I, I, I don't know. Who's complaining about that? I know people are like, well, where's the AEW representation? Well, don't need it. <laughs> we ain't getting it. It's good. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad lineup. Moving on then to the third match, which is the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship oh, match. <laughs> the champions, TMDK, Shane, Haste, and Mikey Nichols defeated the challengers, Bad Luck Farley and Caveman Ugg. Seven minutes, 49 seconds, following the Thunder Valley. This wasn't that bad. This was exactly as I predicted, David. I, I said last week I, I expected TMDK to be bumping like nutters to make Caveman Ugg look good, and that's exactly what they did. Like The moment that stuck in my mind was that shotgun front kick from Caveman Ugg yeah. and Shane Haste. So Shane Haste is a guy who does phone it in from time to time, but he went flying across that ring to make Ugg look like a monster. Yeah. And uh, I mean, naturally, Bad Luck Farley added absolutely nothing of value to this match, but they did a good job collectively with the layout to establish Caveman Ugg as the danger and then TMDK using their superior teamwork to isolate him, take him down with some really nice looking dual power moves. And yeah, so I mean, TMDK, I don't think they've really been given the chance to showcase w- what they're all about and, and accentuate their strengths. I just want to see more because again, I don't think these titles have been defended as regularly in Japan as I would like. And there was a really great promo backstage from Mikey Nichols showing how much the IWGP tag titles mean to him. He said that it's all he's ever wanted since he was in the dojo and, and having these titles prove that they're the best tag team in the world. And we've had... Um, Holy Seaman Army, Hanare and Great Okan coming out afterwards challenging for them. So we're going to see more <laughs> Hanare and Mikey Nichols violence. So that's good. I'm excited about that. But yeah, I thought if the, you know, the mission statement here was to make Caveman Ugg look good. And as far as I know, it's a one and done. I don't think he's got any more bookings lined up. But I think he did enough here to warrant a callback at some point because I think he could fulfill that role as, you know, like the Lance Archer, the big monstrous, crazy um, foreign heel that the fans are a bit scared of and comes out there and looks like a, a big big kaiju. <laughs> kaiju. Kaiju big battle. Um, okay. So one, I don't think this match was as bad as I had anticipated. So there's a plus, right? I think TMDK overall is a good tag team. Yes, I feel like they could use a nice program with a with decent dance partners to help kind of put that in people's minds. Have they gotten that yet? I don't think they have. I'm, so I'm with you on that. Um, I I I fucking hate the caveman gimmick. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I just fucking hate it. Um. I just, I I got no time for it. That is not to say that I was not happy or impressed or thought that Caveman Ugg uh, doesn't have a spot, right? He, we can definitely find a role for him. Um, would I prefer a non-Caveman? Yes, of course I would. I think everybody would. But uh, I think... The match did two things. One, just like you said, it helped establish this guy as a, a, a at least a um, somewhat dangerous foe that can wreak havoc and can beat anyone in a moment's notice. Now, he didn't hear, which is the right move. It would have been nice if it was folly, but okay, great. Um it also gave TMDK a win that they probably desperately needed in front of as many eyeballs as they possibly could. And 
we're going to get Hanare and Okan, which I don't think anybody's going to complain about. I, I feel like all four of those guys can complement each other rather well. So I think we win here. Uh, like going into a match that was easily hand waveable, easily a bathroom break. We made fun and we had our little jokes, but overall, it wasn't that bad. And if we're trying to be a little bit more analytical, I feel like it accomplished multiple goals at the same time. And and going into this match, I didn't expect any of that to be done. So thumbs up. Thumbs up. I'm happy with it. Fale is Fale. I mean, look, Fale has enough history with the company that people can still take him seriously from a, like, like an outside. Like Nobody's sitting there looking for five-star Fale. But like he has enough fucking history with the company to make him at least feel somewhat dangerous, even though he's completely fucking Im- immobile. He has put on a couple pounds, and the gray beard does him no fucking favors. But here we are. I think he's actually lost weight. I've just seen really? some stuff on, on social media of him saying where? that he's... Where did he lose it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me where. I, I, I think maybe we've we've not seen him in such a long time that he was a lot bigger <laughs> when he just, he wasn't on our TV screens and then has subsequently lost that weight. But yeah, I yeah. used to enjoy watching his stuff on Instagram. We have like these videos, which would be like, artist at work where he get like an entire loaf of white bread on hollow it out. And then he put inside the bread, like it's fried kind of- chicken and, <laughs> and a, a jumbo sausage and a load of French fries and gravy meatloaf. and then put, the, put a meatloaf and put the top back on and then be like, Mwah, yes, look, look what I've done. This good thing is the thing that I've done. Well, he does have an insatiable <laughs> appetite. Um, he's ravenous. Look, I think, all right, yes or no. Are they in world tag league? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm going I, I don't know if they will be in World Tag League as a team, mm. but I would expect I would expect both of them to be in World Tag League. Really? Either, if not teaming together in separate teams. Wow. Because I, 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 I can't under uh, uh, underestimate the ability of Jack Bonzer to <laughs> worm his way in. <laughs> you know, we, know, we know the prime function of the Fale Dojo, which is, you know, to get a payday for uh, Farle and Jack Bonza and yeah. Tony Kazina and all, all those guys. <laughs> I'm going to get shouted at again. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. joking. They're, all, they're all great guys. <laughs> yes. We love them. Uh, I, I never mind. I'm sorry. I don't know. But yes. Um, I don't know. I think you think they're going to have to, really. Okay. So they would have Farley come in with another guy and Ugg with another guy. Really? Maybe. I mean, they might no. do something on Tamashi, which, you know, they can claim happened because no one's watching it. There's no <laughs> fact checking it. Right. Pat Patterson winning the Intercontinental titles, are you telling me? <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I'd be happier if they were together because, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Maybe that he can call, who is it? Barbario Cavanaro? From- oh, yeah. That's, that's the match that people wanted for. Yes, caveman isn't versus it? caveman. Caveman, yeah. Special guest referee, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Driving around with ball feet. You're not going to get this level of comedy anywhere else. No, this you're season. not. Just enjoy it. Right. Right. Um, fourth match then was the never open weight championship match with uh, Shingo Takagi getting a successful defense against the challenging Niohei Oiwa in 10 minutes, 42 seconds with the last of the dragon. And this course is all about you know, our first impressions of Oiwa, who wrestles with like a, a refreshing economy of movement. It's sort of the, the other side of the Yuya Uemrakoi, sort of stripped back basics of just like a beefy heavyweight wrestler. There's nothing unnecessarily flashy. Uh, I'm going to drop another Virtual Fighter reference, like Virtual Fighter 1 Wolf Hawkfield or, or King from Tekken 1, before the moves got just totally out of control. But like they somehow, it was a very dense match. They packed so much into the first five minutes. And and it was, a, I think, a fairly dominant win from Shingo. He he seemed to kick out of Oiwa's entire move set. Like he kicked out of the grip, that spinning lariat, and he kicked out of the Dr. Bomb, which he'd been beating people with in Noah. So that was a bit curious for me. Like it looked like Shingo won fairly comfortably in the end. But 
I think I've seen enough from this match to say that Oiwa might be the guy because he's got, he ticks all the boxes for me. He's got the looks, he's got the body, he's got the tits, uh, he's got the aura. And just like the, 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 to carry himself going toe to toe with Shingo in his first singles match since his return and looking like he belongs there. The crowd already chanting his name. Like, you know, when you get the, that sort of pocket of deep manly chants from yep. the back that you know, oh, this guy's starting to catch on now with the hardcores. So we got that, right? You, you picked that up as well. And then at the end, even though he lost, there was, there was that little look from Fujita towards Shingo. That made me think, oh, yeah, some, something could be up here. And another the small thing that I appreciate, Oi were selling the beat down by, he, he didn't come out for the in-ring Zack celebrations after the main event. Mm. And he made sure he didn't come out backstage until he was summoned. Like he was basically dragged onto the, uh, the, the, I don't know what you call that area, but he, he, and even then he made sure that he had an ice pack. So just the, those little things that show, you know, he's, he's paying attention and, and making sure that he sells that beat down properly. Yeah. So uh, the novelist says, I'm mad excited about Zach finally winning the title and going into Royal Quest as champion. Is cinema, but my favorite match from KOPW was Shingo versus Oiwa. I think Oiwa is a star, and I think him and Uemura are the ones, not Suji and Umino. What do you guys think? They have a talented guy right, uh, right underneath their nose, which is really awesome. It's really, really cool um, that they have locked down. You know, like there's no fear of, of somebody kind of jumping to, uh, you know, chasing the bag, so to speak. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe he is chasing the bag with New Japan because they have a guy that I think has proven that. And this match aside, like, don't take the fucking result as, oh, well, they don't think he's... Because f- they do this to everybody. You know what I mean? Like, the first thing that... Like, the first big thing upon a return, um, I would say the majority of the time under under New Japan's watch turns into a loss. So I think we all kind of felt, okay, he's losing. But, but, uh, like, give me another guy who you're more fucking excited for and looking forward to. Like, he's leapfrogged over just about everybody for me when it comes to uh, you know, we talk about the, the fucking musketeers. Fuck the musketeers. Like I'm, I want I, this guy. This is your guy. <laughs> you know, to me, this is your guy. So, look, is it time that they uh, label Oiwa and Uemura and Fujita as the new new musketeers? <laughs> <laughs> Musketeer battles. It's, okay, but 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 but. How great would that be, right? Having those two factions, so to speak, Musketeer 1 and Musketeer 2 or whatever the fuck. Like, like to me, that's incredibly sexy. And, like, that's your future. Like, you could have those two factions be, like, that's, that's your set for years. Like, come on. Let's fucking go. Um, and again... Other things would have to pan out, and, and other factions. Design. We, we we understand, but like yes, yeah. To, because trust me, I'm a I'm a bigger fan of number two musketeer than I am of number one musketeer. Absolutely. Like, like there is something. Like the idea of that would be really fucking sexy, and. Again, we can fantasy book all day long. Those guys are my guys. Those guys are my guys. And again, there's a plenty of math and fucking mental gymnastics that have to be pulled to make that happen. But if I'm if I'm building the company, I'm gonna I'm taking a hard look at group number two. Fuck yeah, I am. Because I, I don't know. There's something like they they feel to me. I don't want to say 10 times, but they feel like these, those are the guys that are ready. And the, and the first group are guys that maybe a little bit of, we're getting force fed. And 
you know, we're, they're trying to do the fucking airplane with the spoon, but open the fucking hanger. Here you go. Take your fucking room. Right. Where the other one is like, oh, there's a bowl of fucking ice cream right here. And that's delicious. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like there is it does feel like a little bit of we're 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 cramming this down your throats as opposed to, ooh, look at that fucking thing over there. Like that's that's where my head is with these guys. I am the meme of, you know, the guy walking with his girlfriend yes. and he's turning around, <laughs> pulling the face, going, ooh, looking at the thing. So yep. me with my arm around the last uh, returning young line that I praised and said is going to be the guy. And then I'm looking at the one who's, who's just come back. Like, oh, well, actually, maybe this is the guy. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of guys going around here. Yes. But I'm, but like, I, I look, he was in there with a great dance partner, right? Shingo. No, who has a bad match with fucking Shingo, right? You might have a good match. You might not have a great match, but you're going to have a fucking, at the very least, a very good match. He's a guy. Oh, he was a guy. So they have it. They have they have it right under his nose. So we'll see. We'll see. But we, again, we said the same thing about a fucking guy who's now dancing along with uh, Ricochet and, uh, <laughs> and Will having fun. So we'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's a different situation, mind you. But um, yeah, they got a guy. They have a guy. The fifth match, the the best three way match in the wrestling world of the weekend, the NJPW World TV Championship three way match, where the challenger Ren Narita defeated the champion Jeff Cobb and the challenger Yota Suji in twelve minutes twenty seven seconds with <laughs> the double cross. And yep. I mean, the match was. It was all right. I mean, I don't love three ways and I didn't think this was particularly brilliant. It was fine. But I think the the result is more significant than talking about the match itself because Ren is the first musketeer to win yes. a title. How about right? that? Yeah. Nice bit of symmetry, as I said last week, with him you know, finally managing to win this title. He tried to win it when he was playing by the rules and being a baby face. Didn't get the job done, but now... He's managed to win the title since he's joined House of Torture and is breaking all the rules. So there's that little storyline beat, if you like that. And again, your mileage may vary on Ren, but as I sort of hinted at at the start of this podcast, I can't be too critical of a concerted effort to elevate young homegrown talent. And having this belt on Ren is a million times better than having it on you know Matt Riddle, for example. So... While it might not be one for the purists, I do think we as a fan base need to to not be the guys going, push the young talent. No, not like that. Not so, that one. Right, right. Well, yeah, exactly. So while current Ren narrator might not be to everyone's taste, at least he knows who he is and he is a New Japan guy and he knows his spot on the roster. So uh, we also had a, a comment from Jacob on the Discord. He says, I would like it to be noted that there is in fact someone desperately wanting Ren to win the TV title. I'm curious as to what you two think. I've got the feeling that you've both given up on Ren, but I think his fate is still to eventually be a top of the card guy, not like the ace or anything, but an evil level of being pushed. I don't think we've given up on him. And as a matter of fact, I would go so far as to say we have complimented him doing this. Now, when we say this, we mean the house of torture stuff, right? Um, Like, it's not ideal, in, at least in my eyes, right? Of, uh, and I think that you are going to eventually be somewhat limited, right, in this role. But I, he's, he could still do it for a while. And I think he's done a good job in that capacity. That being said, I would, I would want him to eventually outgrow that, right? Eventually outgrow House of Torture because I think that there's somewhat limits, um, this is my favorite title, right? I love the idea of the sprints. I love the idea of, um, you know, short and sweet and let's pack 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Love it. Uh, look, I can't sit here and, and say that I'm not somewhat disappointed in that we're guaranteed more. House of Torture stuff in it on a title that honestly I I thoroughly enjoy. Um, that being said, 
don't you think the idea of that time limit and the idea of sprints could be very interesting in the way that Ren does what he does? It could make things a lot more interesting. Like, let's put it this way. Do I want to see a Ren Narita 30 minute match right now? No, I do not. No, I do not. A 15 minute sprint with fucking bullshit flying left and right. That could be fun. That could be good. Right? Um, so again, I think I don't think there's anybody here that was like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna throw it out there. I don't think anybody was like, if you had if we laid down money and said, okay, who's going to be one of the first youngsters that's going to win a, their first singles title? I don't think many people would have put money on rent. And I think the odds would have been pretty high. Um, but, you know, the odds being low, your your value being high. Um, he's not terrible at what he does. I just don't want to see him do that for too much longer. Does that make any sense? Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I hear what you're saying. But uh, again, I think, you know, we had President Tanahashi saying several months ago that he was going to dial down the uh, House of Torture shenanigans. And we talked about how there is a time and a place for it. There's a lane for it. And I think this is fine. Yeah. Because particularly from where we were this time last year, where it was in the main event of King of Pro Wrestling... This being the what? What is this? The the fifth match of the card and lasting twelve minutes. Right. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Like here's the thing: we're not they're not going away, right? So if they're going to be here, you're exactly right. Do I want this in the main event? Fuck no. Am I okay with this being like a secondary slash third singles title in the company? Yeah. A fifth match for fifth for, for maximum. 15 minutes? I'm good with it. Like, it's not going away. So, like, this and, like, Never Six Man and shit like that, there's always been a place for that in pro wrestling. Uh, Name the fucking promotion. Fucking all Japan at their height had, you know, it had a decent share, you know, not a ton, but it had nonsense. Let's not, let's not fucking, not, but not at the top, right? Not at the top. There's a place for it. And I think it, it, it um, um, again, do I want Ren in this current role to be front facing with the company? I do not. But fifth match, I got no fucking problem with it. And again, he's, he's not bad at what he does. He's not bad at what he does. That was my favorite part of the show where we got a video <laughs> from the Young Bucks. Cricket? Cricket? <laughs> and they deliberately left in little pauses in the video. Like at the end of it, there was this really long pause where they're sort of grinning maliciously at the camera and rubbing their hands together. And it just went on for so long because they were obviously thinking that this could be like a, a massive Woo! eruption of cheers from the audience. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. They did oh. not give a solitary shit. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Dare I say, awkward at best, right? Uh, yeah. Hey. But welcome. also, a time honored New Japan tradition for the Young Bucks to make a to end of the year appearance. <laughs> Absolutely <Yeah>. zero pop. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like that. That's feel how like you know that. we're truly back. <laughs> we're back, baby. We're back. Um, yeah. I mean, is anybody. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's a one shot, right? Let's put it that way. We're talking about a one shot. Yeah, I, I mean, from what I understand, I, I think what's been teased is this being part of the Wrestle Dynasty thing. So, like Tanahashi and Kenny Omega versus the Young Bucks. But, I mean, the Young Bucks, even at, the, at their peak, never really had much of a cachet with the Japanese audience. And I don't think that's changed. I mean, you might have. Hoped that it, you know, all the stuff that they've done in AEW would make them bigger stars, and that them returning now, the Japanese fans would be like, "Oh yeah, it's the Young Bucks." But nope, nope, <laughs> nope. Uh, and that's not us just fucking deciding the shit on you know, like they were part of a of a 
very huge faction, right? No doubt. And uh, again, as junior tag champions and as like, you know, them being, you know, cocky little shitheads doing their thing. Um, yeah, they were good. They were great. They were really good. But yeah, nobody. Look, look may, let's let's blame poor Mike of the of the arena <laughs> poor sound acoustics that didn't because because maybe just maybe joe uh the the uh, response was a little bit more positive as opposed to fucking flat uh and let's blame it on the miking of the arena shall we and call it call it that let's make everyone feel good <laughs> but the reality was no one gave a flying fuck Sorry, I've just moved upstairs because there's oh. chaos happening downstairs. Uh, right, let's move on to the, excuse me, um, sixth match, which was the Hiroshi Tanahashi debut 25th anniversary match, which was, uh, so I know in, when we talked oh. about the previous match, I, I was sort of cherry picking the data a bit when I said, oh, look, House of Torture is contained to the fifth match, only 12 minutes. But House of Torture were also in the sixth match and also the seventh match. So <laughs> to, to take take that we're fine. Uh, for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, this was El Phantasmo, Shota Umino, and Hiroshi Tanahashi defeating Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Yujiro Takashi, and Evil. Nine minutes and five seconds. Tanahashi getting the pin with a high five flow. Uh, Damon, you go first, please. Well, I said it last week. I thought it was kind of odd in the sense of... All right. 25 years. They, but here's the thing. Like when, when they do these type of things, it does feel like a lot of times, and this is promotions across the board. It rarely is this dream match 25th year celebrate. Like it's kind of like this hodgepodge of, of people. <laughs> um, and again, I think it seems like we're headed toward president versus president. Um, weird. I, 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 I'm just kind of like, they're going to, they're going to continue to hold <laughs> these titles in every match. I'm kind of like, well, that's, that, they're going to drop it here. Wow. This is that, this is where this ends. And this, like, this, well, this wasn't a title match. This wasn't for the never titles because. Oh, you're right. It wasn't Bolton. Yeah, um, you're right. Yeah. It wasn't Bolton and Yano. I mean, I, what I think. Why not? Was, first of all, we need to we need to talk about the uh, the lovely costumes they had to promote the, the Viking or whatever is it the, the, the it was fucking Gladiator Two, Gladiator. which I'm actually quite looking forward to. I'm looking. I, I want to see that. But uh, yeah, I think we may, as I suggested before, maybe possibly doing ELP and Show to Umino teaming up at some point, maybe for World Tag League. But I mean, the big talking point coming out of this was Hiroshi Tanahashi declaring that he will retire at Wrestle Kingdom 2026. So we've got, I suspect, a lot of crying that is going to happen <laughs> yeah, for the next 15 of, months. Yeah, uh, In-ring art says, any interest in seeing Tanahashi versus Cena? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of speculation abounds, you know, who that final match could be. I think it might well be Shota Umino against Tanahashi for the retirement match. Just the way it's been set up here, I feel that that's what they're going for. But... Your initial thoughts on Tanahashi announcing his retirement for uh, next Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's something that a lot of people, and I know a lot of people have reached out to me and were like, I'm going to this. I got I got to fucking go. I got to fucking go. And I, and I get it. I get it. Um, arguably the greatest pro wrestler of our, of our time. Um, Hmm. <laughs> what? Did, uh, all right. Let me let me throw this out here. Do you think the timing was weird of announcing this? Like we got to get through a Wrestle Kingdom, and then it's the next Wrestle Kingdom, right? Seems yeah, I suppose it it gives a long run up towards that eventual retirement to try yeah. to sell as many tickets as possible for every event because now. It's going to be like, oh, this is the last time you're going to get to see Tanahashi in this place. The last time you see Tanahashi in this tournament. And no, 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 no. Right. Yeah, it's going to turn into the fucking, yeah, retirement tour uh, for a year and a half. 
Um, I think everybody knew what was coming. I think everybody knew that this day was, is com- was coming sooner than later. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be massive. I think it'll be huge. Like it'll it'll be up there with uh, a, a fucking you know a Muda retirement show or um dare I say? Do you think it would be as it, I mean it, it's different buildings, mind you, and all that, but. Like I, I would, f- I feel like it's right up there with like a Kenta Kabashi retirement show or a, a little bit different. I mean, he came back from fucking, you know, cancer <laughs> uh, to have this. Um, I don't know. It's weird. Like because I, I guess because it's so far off in the distance, it feels like. But but the reality of it is, it might not be. You know, it's a short amount of time. Look, he's one of the greatest pro wrestlers to ever fucking grace the ring. Him retiring, I think, is a big deal. Is is he the same Hiroshi Tanahashi of you know five years ago, six years ago, eight years ago? No, of course not. But what he's meant to not only New Japan but pro wrestling in general. I don't think I don't think there would be half the interest of New Japan pro wrestling if it wasn't for him. I think his matches helped springboard new japan and again i think there that there is a lot of perfect timings you know i think okada coming into his own like you needed he needed that dance partner and um but even before then like he was just a guy that the company so massively depended upon um i don't know it's weird like it's harder for me to get nostalgic and, and and because there's going to be a time and a place for that but i just feel like it's so far off in the distance like it's not even a year it's over a year i don't know i just think the timing of it is just a little bit odd but yeah you're probably right the, the like the announcements made so anytime he's on a show people are going to go so i'd be curious to see how long they can milk that <laughs> because it does feel like it does feel a little bit like a milking it does feel a little bit like a milking but okay Go for it. He does. If anybody deserves it, he deserves it. And I hate saying. If I'm deserves. being really cynical, like it could even be with Royal Quest around the corner. Just a little nudge to English fans, like, look, we got Tanahashi. Right, right. Big spot on this on the show. How many times more are you going to see him? You don't know, right? I mean, seriously. I mean, he loves coming to the fucking states. It feels like he comes for every one of these dopey shows. You know, Philly or Washington or whatever. You, you don't think those shows are going to be a tougher ticket? The to- you know, than before. I don't know. I think it guarantees it, right? This might be your last time he ever fucking walks in 2300 Arena. Might be the last time you see him in fucking Lowell, Massachusetts. It might be the last. So I think there's, there is a little bit to that. Yeah. So, hey. <sighs> it's pro wrestling. <laughs> they're good. Like, what am I complaining about? They're, they're, they milk everything in pro wrestling. So, uh, if, and again, if anybody deserves the fucking victory tour with him. So I'm good with it. Seventh match, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match, where the champion Doki defeated the challenger show in 14 seconds via a suplex de la Luna. And look, it's exactly as I called it. I'm going to get editor Dan to cut in my preview from last week using the, the flashback sound effects. Uh, well, Damon, what I predict will happen here is show will unmask Doki immediately and Doki will be wearing spooky kabuki face paint and he'll pull a lot of funny faces and win in 14 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, Doki did his homework here. He he out-funny-faced the funny face man and uh, arguably the best-case scenario yeah. for this match. Yeah, because it could have been like we described a, a non 15 minute shithousery match where, where it will tempt you and tease you with, Oh, this, this might not be, Oh, it is. Oh, here we are. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, look, uh, somebody was double parked outside. Somebody had a flight to catch, I guess. So <laughs> maybe who knows? Um, I was happy with, uh, Doki still holding gold. I think everybody was. I think everybody's excited. Everyone loves the um, the idea of a guy beating the odds. So, yeah, I'm down for it. 
good. Uh, yeah, it is funny that we talked about, yeah, you know, right place, House of Torture, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Literally three consecutive matches. But, 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 um, you know, all, all those nasty little heels got put in their place and everyone walks away happy. So good, good on them. Yeah, very smart because we had like the whole elongated doggy overcoming House of Torture shenanigans in the Kanemaru match. And I think it would have been a bit lazy to just do that whole thing again. So very refreshing for, that they yeah. did this. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely thought that was, that was the route we were going again. I was all for it. And then it didn't. So yeah, <laughs> you know, it's pretty good. Again, I, I love the idea of guys getting on, uh, uh, you know, it, I don't want to say an easy night, but like, a you know, little, uh, just things to keep you on your toes. I like being kept on my toes. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, remember the, was it Sakura Genesis 2017 when Hiromu beat Kushida in about a, a minute and a half? Like, you, you need that sort of stuff. For yes, the, you know, keep people on. honest. Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing too. For all our bitching and moaning about, you know, like a Yano in a G1, there is something to be said about those flash little pins and Tanahashi eating pins and, you know, stuff like that. Like, that's, again, it's there just to keep you on your fucking toes, which is good. And after this match, we had Master Watto making his comeback. All right. And I thought he looked really good. I mean, he, he seems to have shed all the, the goofier elements of his presentation. All, all the blueness seems to have gone. And he got great reception from the fans. And he, he looks like a, a serious wrestler. And not to say that he was a joke before, but I just think he, he, he looked really great here. And I thought that they might be doing Watto, Doki, at the Tokyo Dome, but we're getting that power struggle instead, uh, which is making me look ahead to Wrestle Kingdom and think, you know, maybe the direction is Watto winning the title at Power Struggle and then possibly facing Despi because they obviously have a lot, a lot of history together. Um, but yeah, it's raised a lot of questions, but I'm just happy to see Master Watto back. Yeah, it was good. I mean, again, my, you're... you're he's, he's always been one of those guys that where I've been like up and down with, and I think when he before he uh took a little hiatus i was i I think it was more pro than i was eh. so then out of sight out of mind and it's like ah you again (laughs) so i did get that but it was refreshing because i think it would have been dopey if he had all this blue shit you know what i mean like okay like nobody knew you were in the building um yeah uh, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this. I'm going into this with a with an open mind. How about that? I'm going into this as okay, a little bit of a even. Again, you were you were you you were a plus in my eyes before. Like you didn't start out that way. That's for fucking sure. But you eventually got me more toward your side. Awesome. Well. Again, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, maybe. I don't know. But again, I'm giving him now a clean slate. And he can hopefully win me over again. I don't know why. I'm just I have... thinking about Yo again. Why? Oh, you think you think they're going to be in the mix together? No, just because I just was suddenly reminded of the match that he got injured. Wasn't it like a it was an IWGP junior heavyweight championship match against show. Wasn't it? And then he hurt his shoulder and then he was going out in tears. Am I remembering that correctly? Uh, you're probably right. I, <laughs> <But> I, <laughs> the reason I said, I'm remembering sort of at the time saying, yeah, it was a uh, yeah, show to fit you by referee stoppage. That was Sakura Genesis. Oh, yes. Thinking, oh, that was the such a, stop. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm a really you. heart-wrenching moment, like absolutely devastating and thinking like this could be a, such a huge emotional hook for Yo when he comes back on a wave of goodwill because people will remember how devastating the manner of his injury was. <laughs> and now he's just coming back, running outside the arena. Shouting, <laughs> I just I can't, I can't go over that. Right, uh, we better move on. Uh, yeah. Right, let's talk about the eighth match, which was the IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship match. David Finlay successfully defending against the challenger Hiroki Goto. Sixteen minutes fifty eight seconds, overkill. This is a really good match. I mean, it may not be the best 
in ring match of the current Finlay run. Uh-huh. But I think this is the flagship performance just for exactly who 2024 David Finlay is. His his reborn character in its fully idealized form and wonderfully distinct from his Bullet Club forebears. Because David Finlay is a nasty, violent, vindictive piece of shit. Right? He's not flashy like Kenny Omega. He's not sneaky like Jay White. He's not like the crafty coward. He's not trying to change the world. He's just a spiteful, hate-filled brute who, who who delights in causing emotional and physical harm to others. You could see just how much he was reveling in having Goto's kids ringside. Although I do think they missed a trick not having the kids hit the ring and take out Ghetto with a shotgun. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give him a pass on that. And it's just a, a, a horrible match in a good way. Like it was not as dynamic as the Yoshihashi match, but much more impactful, ugly, just a miserable experience. <laughs> it's like yeah. I hated it, but in a good way. Like uh, that bit, yeah, the GTR reversal backslide into the overkill, just, just nasty business. And, and of course, the thing everyone will remember is Goto's poor little girl, like her fingers oh, shining with her tears, just heartbreaking stuff. And as a, da- I mean, I did not say as a dad, like everyone's going to watch that, but you know, as a dad, that does hit particularly hard for me. And uh, a similar reaction to Esther watching me at work trying to deliver an assembly on British values. <laughs> God bless Hiroki Goto for, for doing this. Cause I don't think I could have done that. I think my right. dad instincts would have kicked in and I'd be like, right. I just started shooting on David Finnick, like cinching in like a tight inside cradle <laughs> referees can be like, ha ha. <laughs> like, what What's, was that supposed to happen? But uh, yeah. a, a match that I think really puts the exclamation point on what an absolute piece of shit Finley is. And, and I think it leaves Goto once again, uh, yeah, I mean, it is leaving him as a failure when it mattered most, but I still think there's something there with him. And his run in the last few months has shown me something I didn't think was there. And I do feel now I need him to get his moment in the sunshine with his kids ringside in the future. I don't know exactly what that looks like, like for what title against whom, but it's one of those matches, I think, which may have done possibly more for Goto in defeat than had he actually won the belt. Yeah. One, it was, here's what, so Goto's on this magical run in 2024, right? Not only in ring, but like, you know, the company kind of given this, let's call it what it is, you know, a guy who's ha- is up there in years who, uh, Maybe this might be one of the last remaining shots that he'll have, right? Um, and that's not to say that he can't still go, because obviously this year he's definitely proved it. And even in this match, I feel like he's proved it. But um, name me another New Japan pro wrestler who has as much positive. Uh, like you couldn't do that to just about anyone else. Like they built. Hiroki Goto up as this guy who is swimming upstream and fighting the odds and battling father time and pulling out these wins again, not like a Yoshihashi situation, but a thing where people are, let's fucking go. You know, we're sitting here pumped up about Hiroki Goto in 2024 and we're pumped up that he's got this fucking title shot and how fucking great would it be for him to win? Nope. They and also David, the backdrop of Okada leaving. Yep. And now Goto basically being given the keys to the chaos car. Be like, right, well, you're the chaos leader now, I guess. Yep. What now? Yeah. No. No fucking doubt. So now we're gonna we're gonna bring his kids out, and you know everyone's kind of getting behind him and rooting behind him, and he gets his ass kicked. David Finley, like, has. Like name me in the like David Finley could have this match with anyone else in that fucking roster, and truth be told, he might have had a better match with other opponents, right? Like in the in the throw this the fucking stars at it kind of point of view, but I don't think there's anybody else on that roster who's built up enough fucking emotional support baggage, we'll call it, than Hiroki Goto. Like, again, we're fucking rooting for the guy. He, we have no right to be rooting for the fucking guy, <laughs> right? Like, we should be focusing on the youngsters and every fucking fucking iteration of musketeer you can think of. 
Yet, we're talking about Hiroki Goto, which is a f- great thing. David Finley, the ultimate dickhead, <laughs> shits on everyone's fucking parade, right? And does so with an exclamation point. Um, I think that's, I, I, I like the way they, I like their thinking. I like their thought process. Yes, I feel sorry for the, the fucking kid. Like the kids, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how you tell the kid, well, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Do you, do you kayfabe the fucking kids? Are you like, I don't know what do you do. Um, does this turn into like a fucking Mick Foley situation where he's got to talk his kids off the ledge? Um, and the kids got to go to school. Uh, your dad lost. Fuck you. Leave me alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just like, right. Imagine going up again, going up and saying, all right, Joel, uh, we need your children to be in the front row. And uh, we're going to have you lose this match. And maybe in a, um, not necessarily a squash. No, 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 no. We don't put disrespect to you in any way. But <laughs> like you're going to get a little bit of an ass kicking. Uh, and your kids might cry. What do you say? You signing up for that? I'm not. No. Well, I don't mean, I, I can see, you know, the value to come. I'll be a company man and do it. Just you, they're not, they're not going to sort of be rude to my children, are they? They're not going to disrespect uh, them. Directly. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So again, I got to give credit where credit is due. Um, I, and here's the thing too. I know that the, that the label that, and again, we just say this tongue in cheek and joking, but you know, the numbers are the numbers is that you're right. Hiroki Goto is a guy who's never really kind of fucking crossed the finish line and to do it again. Okay. I don't want it to be him, be the lovable loser, mind you. Um, because I don't think he is. Uh, but once again, he's a guy that at every fucking turn, you know, talk again, an unsung hero. The, does Hiroki Goto have to do that? Does he have to does he have to have a night like that? Where, you know, he's gotta have a car ride home and explain to the kids what happened and why everything's okay. You know what I mean? Like there's more to it than him <laughs> just focal from the wife. <laughs> <Right>. What <laughs> the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Seriously, imagine that fucking conversation. Imagine, like, and and, uh, they could have put anybody else in that role. They could put, and he did it. So I gotta, I gotta give him all the credit in the world. He is an unsung hero because, as much as we want to sit here and joke, like, I'm sure there was a a conversation with the kids, and you know, and and like. I don't know. Do you want your kids to think that, oh, he couldn't, mm, my dad couldn't get fucking, I'm proud of him, but he couldn't get the fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm sure the kids aren't fucking smartened up. They're crying at fucking ringside. God bless Hiroki Goto, man. Like, talk about a love for the business. <laughs> the whole family's involved now. Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. David Finley, you'll pay for this one, sir. You'll pay for this one. But also, like, what a great win for New Japan in general to take this cluster of what were basically mid-carders. Like, if you t- said, like, I don't know, two years ago that we're going to have David Finley and Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, some of the most compelling stuff on on the product, and that's going to be, like, y- your, your dramatic semi-main event and everyone's going to love it, you, you would have got laughed out of the building. Right. And that's, but that's, here's the thing, though. That's that's the problem. Like for the people who stuck around and and they're getting this, I don't think anybody's like, oh, this fucking blows. Like they're they're digging it, they're loving it, right? But the people who jump ship, they look at it and they're like, ah, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Eighth gay too? Like, but again, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. So like, I, I like. Here's the thing too. When we opened the show and I talked about how happy I was, I'm happy for uh, other people who have stuck around. I'm happy for all those people in our Discord. I'm happy for uh, the Chris Samses. I'm happy for the Keeping It Strong Styles. I'm happy for uh, the former Okada shorts. I'm happy for fucking a lot of people. I'm happy for fucking Walker Stewart, who comes over in probably not the best of times for new Japan pro wrestling and gets to experience a nice little fucking 2024, right? Makes those plane trips a little bit easier to swallow. I'm happy for a ton of people. I'm happy for the staff. I'm happy for 
we've been through a lot. <laughs> we've been through fucking a lot. Um, what was my point? Well, I don't know. We're all happy. Who the fuck cares? All right. We're all eating big. That's, that's the point. Well, yes, we are. Oh, but the point of people being on top. and yeah. But yeah, like if you don't know, then by all means, go watch whatever the fuck you want to watch and get enjoyment somewhere else. But no, as the kids say, we're cooking over here. We're fucking cooking. We move on then to the uh, Tai Chi challenge. So Tai Chi came out afterwards. So David Finley called out Yuya Uemura. And Yuya, of course, is injured. And then Tai Chi came out. And now Tai Chi is going to be challenging for that title at Power Struggle. So I just do love this storyline of, well, not even storyline, just sort of the, the structural element of this global heavyweight championship of Finley going through all of those unsung mid-card veterans. Because it's extremely good. And so... Tai Chi, I was a bit worried after him being excluded from the G1. Like, you know, are they are they done with him? But now we're getting a little renaissance of the guys like him and Yoshihashi who didn't make the G1 getting to do something meaningful and it making sense in storyline with these guys saying, look, I was excluded from the G1. I'm pissed off. I'm, this is a great chance for me to show that I, I've still got it and to, to give my fans something to cheer about. So yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, Matthew says, as a parent, any insight on Goto's son, no selling his dad's hug and refusing to comfort his sister. <laughs> that boy was not fulfilling the brief. And Max says, provided he gets by Tai Chi, who's Finley's opponent for Wrestle Kingdom. Um, I still think it's Yota Suji. I think there's enough history between them this year with Suji getting wins over Finley to, to justify that uh, in storyline. Yeah, um, as much as I love Tai Chi, I don't think Tai Chi is going to win that. So I think Finley Suji is the direction. Yeah, um, a thousand percent. Yep, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, Tai Chi's had a weird year, like n- not of his own fault, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, give him a little spotlight. The guy, um, the guy delivers. So well, and, and the thing is, you don't. You might need these guys at the G1 next year. So. You know, it doesn't benefit the company to just bury everyone who wasn't in it this year. It's good to keep guys like Yoshihashi and Taichi relevant because they might need the tap on the shoulder next year if guys get hurt or they're not able to um, bring over the outsiders that they wanted. Yeah, but, you know, I hate to say it, but, like, he's had a very uneventful year, you know, and it's like, I appreciate the fact that we're going to heat him up a little bit, but... And and I think there's there's absolute value in him still, but yeah, it does feel like like we're we're we're, we're microwaving him instead of putting him, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's not going to the the Traeger. Is it a Traeger? The, the that thing that all dads have these days. The Traeger? Oh, is it a, is it a Traeger? It's like a smoker. Oh yeah, uh, like a pellet. Uh, thing smoker yeah all right i thought th- i don't know i don't know what they are <laughs> <laughs> i'm totally lost the analogy all right i'm gonna move on uh, main right. event was the iwgp world heavyweight championship match with the challenger and g1 climax winner zach saber jr well, defeating go. the champion tetsuya naito 24 minutes 41 seconds saber driver you've been tangoed special zach becomes a new champion so new japan got tango for those of you who don't know right tango is um, a British soft drink. It's a fizzy orange drink. And in the, I think it was like late eighties, early nineties, there was this um, advertising campaign with the slogan, you've been tango to where an orange man, a naked orange man would run up to someone and slap them in the face, like two handed, like one hand slapping on either cheek to oh. show what it was like drinking tango. Cause it was so fizzy and, and <laughs> delicious and refreshing. But then, all the kids at school started running around, slapping each other in the face, shouting, you've been tangoed. And it ended up with um, a surgeon writing in to tango saying, look, I'm not the complaining sort, but I just wanted you to know, I've just performed surgery on a child with a perforated eardrum. And I asked him what happened. And he said, oh, I got tangoed. And then after that, (laughs) right? So after that, they changed the advert. So instead of slapping the guy who's just drunk the tango, the orange man would run up to him and, grab his face and kiss him directly on the lips. Oh. And that that was their idea of an improvement. And there's a great tweet from a, a Count Out Victory. He says, ah, the 90s where you replace physical violence with sexual assault. And so, <laughs> yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a point to be made there, that's for sure. Uh, uh, wow. Right, so okay. this, 
I'm trying to think <laughs> if I have a U.S. equivalent of like a, a campaign like that that just went to a totally fucking south. Uh, I can't think of one. That's that's good. Now now I can't wait. I got to get a. Fu- Did they still sell this orange fizzy drink? Uh, yeah, yeah. You still get Tango. You have to have nice. a Tango when you come over. I will definitely have one. And then you can slap me in the fucking face. Be great. <laughs> or kiss you. Or both. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> I'll leave the door ajar. Right. <laughs> so uh, this uh, this wrestling match then, um, it was interesting in the loud because I thought Naito was quite dominant in the match. It, it felt like it was sort of 70% Naito, but then towards the end, some sharp, well-timed reversals from Zach. And also those little storyline beats of him borrowing from those who've been closest to him to make the difference. Like we had the, the shout out to Suzuki with a gotch style power driver. Uh, he did a Tai Chi's ax bomber um, and a really emphatic finish with the three consecutive Zach drivers. The first one, Naito's kicking out defiantly at one and then he, one, he kicks yeah. out at 2.9. It's just, he's on his last legs, but he's going out in his shield and a backstage Zach was talking about how Naito's so stubborn that he knew he'd have to use an impact move and pin him rather than going for a submission because he, he said that there was no chance Naito was going to submit. Naito was just going to fight until his, his body gave up, not his heart. So, and, and look, for all the, in my opinion, justified criticism of Tetsuya Naito's wrestling in recent months, in this match, Naito more than held up his ends. Uh, and look, it wasn't the most ambitious match in terms of sequences. Like there was a lot of slow build up and grappling. But there were some very intricate parts towards the end of the match. There was a, a, a sequence with uh, a Destino that was counting to a European uppercut, then into a backslide, then a Tornado DDT, and then some cradle transitions that were executed perfectly. That that could have gone very badly wrong. So I do want to give Naito his flowers for uh, a strong performance at the end of a run where the company have just run this guy into the ground. They, they've squeezed every last ounce of toothpaste out of the tube with Naito. They've leaned on him so heavily in the last few years to to sell tickets and work main events both within New Japan and cross promotionally and he's just a deeply unselfish worker such a professional putting over guys like Zach or or Okan or Evil or, or Moxley losing the world title twice in a year and, and like, as we said last week I don't think he gets the recognition he really deserves it. and as you said i I agree. I hope he is able to take some time off in the near future to just have a fucking break because God knows he deserves one. And and who knows if he is able to just go on holiday and let his body heal up for a bit, then who knows what kind of Naito might return. You never say never with him. He, he continues to prove people wrong. And while a lot of the haters might you know, possibly justifiably think that he's now done as a, a top, top guy and a world title holder in the company, I wouldn't be so quick to write him off. Um, there was a really lovely tweet actually from it was a, a, a Japanese fan and we try and find it. So this was um, at T R T T underscore million. And I'm just hitting the, the Google translate and it says uh, the obvious lack of aim in his flying kicks and his desperate kick out at the count of one after a year of struggling in an environment that clearly didn't suit his condition. Naito's determination and sadness shown in that final moment, even as he pulled away in a tattered state, his smile, which somehow seemed to be filled with relief, really hit me. And mm. yeah, I think we've kind of hit the nail on the head, that sort of bittersweet moment with Naito losing his title, but maybe just taking a, a as the sort of the professional Tetsuya Naito, a, a bit of satisfaction in a job well done because now we we hand over the torch where uh, Zack Sabre Jr. for his part saying that he's committed to staying in Japan and just seeing Zach uh, uh, standing there in the ring looking confident and muscular, the fans trying his name, despite him just dethroning the most popular guy in the company, right? The fans still chanting for him. They still love Zach. He's cutting witty promos in in what sounds like fluent Japanese. He's verbally sparring with all these challenges coming into the ring. It, you know, he's not just like memorized the two-line promo in Japanese. Uh, to my he untrained ear, he's that, <laughs> yeah, he, he sounds like just as good as Kenny Omega did speak in Japanese to my, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Someone else could probably evaluate his uh, Japanese, but just look how far Zach has come. He is, he's the, the perfect statesman for 2024 New Japan. He's the right man in the right place at the right time. He's poured his blood, sweat and tears into this company for, for seven and a half years. And now he's the top guy. And not just because of his tenure or, or some sort of abstract need to repay his loyalty, but because he's become one of, if not the best wrestler on the planet. And, and I've been saying this for the last 
three years, it feels like that. He's slowly but inexorably been on this path to the top. Just those little adjustments he's been making, both in terms of his look, his his language skills, his in-ring abilities, the way he conducts himself, the way that other wrestlers look up to him from mm-hmm. the people we speak to, the, the work that he's done bringing new talent to the company from all different countries, mentoring the young Japanese talent within the company. Leader of um, a faction. Um, Right, yeah, redefining TMDK as a crucial part of modern-day New Japan. He, he stood firm, he's been dependable and delivered consistent excellence during really turbulent times when a lot of other guys were packing their bags and walking out. No public fucking about with his contract, just turning up and being great, whether it was in the tag division as, as half a dangerous tech as or, or with the, the TV title, defending the belt against every fucker on the planet, every promotion you could think of all over the world. This is a man who's given so much to New Japan Pro Wrestling. And, and most importantly, for me, he's clearly the best wrestler in the company right now. Just a champion through and through by every definition of the word. I don't give a fuck, Damon. I'm voting for him in the Observer Hall of Fame. I've just convinced myself now as I've been talking about him. Uh, so George says the ZSJ win feels like the biggest moment in New Japan since dot, 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 question mark. And Max says, will Zach be the first foreigner since Brock Lesnar to leave Wrestle Kingdom as champion? Damon, uh, over to you. Talk to me about Naito versus Zach. Well, where, where do I start? All right. First, um, look, He's, I, I've said it a, a, a thousand times. He's, he's my favorite wrestler right now. Um, and he's been that way for quite a while now. He is fantastic in the ring. Creative. Uh, interesting. Never never the same match twice. Even though like people will say, you, you know, you get in the ring with Zach, you're wrestling a Zach match. And I don't know if that's necessarily 100% accurate, but... Um, I see your point, but even then, it's everything still feels fresh. He looks the part. He is the part. He conducts himself the part. And yes, those little tiny, subtle changes in the way he's presented and the way he presents himself. And just that extra little bit of, okay, maybe it's a little bit more muscle. Maybe it's a little bit more carrying yourself as a leader. Maybe... uh sticking your neck out a little bit more and being a locker room leader, whatever, whatever, what, whatever it is that when you add it up, puts him over the top, he's done and he's achieved. And the, the company obviously recognizes that. And the fans recognize that, you know, I don't know how many other people that aren't homegrown talent, so to speak, can go out into the crowd at Sumo Hall and be, you know, mo- mobbed. You know, people were digging it. People were into it. People loved it. How many British flags? Just I'll show to Umina how easy it is to win over those fans. Right, right. I mean, I mean, there's a perfect example, right? Um, so I'm thrilled. I, I, I could not be happier with him winning the title. Um, it makes Royal Quest interesting. It makes Wrestle Kingdom interesting. And, and I think. I want to throw flowers and I know I want, uh, you know, I want to shower him with praise and to an excitement and all of that, which is all well-deserved, excellent, outstanding job. And, and again, not a complete transformation, but think about Zach a year ago, two years ago. And I'm not saying he's a completely different person, but it's kind of like a person in sports where, you know what? He's a, he's a, a, a touted rookie and uh, talent galore and blah, blah, blah. And you just see the progression and the growth. And, you know, then he's the captain of the team and he's outperforming everyone and he leads by example and all of that stuff. Like, I think all of those little things that we talked about took him to, to this point, his dedication, learning the language, knowing that, that how important that is uh, living in Japan. Uh, and also the fact that he's still nonstop, like he, uh, you talked about the TV title and him just defending it fucking everywhere. I'll never forget. There was uh, one wrestle kingdom and I, I can't put my finger on exactly which one, but after the show, we were, uh, in the building that's right next door. And there's like the, that's where like the Denny's is. And, and it, it goes right into, um, the Tokyo dome hotel, like that, that whole complex there's like these little gift shops there and everything um and i saw him walking by 
because and he had his bags and everything and he was leaving because he had to fucking catch a plane like he literally was going to the airport to catch a plane um and i'll never forget that like i'm just like he doesn't have a moment to fucking just enjoy that he was just at wrestle kingdom like it was just like nope on to the next and that work ethic and that kind of shit like well look hopefully it pays off uh in not only uh, press and recognition, but also uh, a, a nice little payday. Now, and there will be plenty more time to shower, praise, and all that, because, again, he is my favorite. Let's talk Naito. At every fucking turn, with New Japan Pro Wrestling, it's been a hill for him, right? Starts out, Stardust Genius, all of that, and it just kind of didn't work. And he gets fucking pretty much booed out of the fucking building at in Osaka. And things just don't look good. I mean, he's won a G1. He's, you know, they're trying. Once again, they're trying to, to, to take the spoonful of Naito and here, enjoy your, your broccoli and your spinach. It'll make you feel good. And people were just like, oh, I'm not 100% sold. Like he was a guy, but he wasn't a guy. Reinvents himself, and trust me, in the beginning, it was a lot of people were like, what the fuck am I looking at? What, like, like, if he's bored, why am I? But people caught on quick and built, and it built, and it built, and it built. Fast forward. Tokyo Dome. Everyone thought he was fucking winning that title against Okada. Didn't happen. And it was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> the hot, like the guy who worked the hardest, came up with something creative, became what he became, hottest guy in the promotion. One, two, three. One tiny slip up and away we went. The times that he did hold the title before this previous run, they, they, were, they were cups of coffee. They were they, like one and dones and, and very short. And you're just like, well, when is this guy going to get the fucking do? Because... You know, you look out in the crowd and there's a you know packed with Los and Gobernables merch and, and he seems like the, the most popular guy. He comes over here in the States and he's fucking getting the loudest pops. And then you fast forward, COVID and clap crowds and all that shit. And he's the guy that's, he's like the fucking, the guy that's trying to hold everything together. And with fucking knees that, couldn't support his fucking body weight at certain points. Eye issues that, you know, there was talk about him hanging him up well before this current run. And the fact that, you know, maybe they're just giving him this, this title to say, thanks. Right. A run. The stuff that he did with the intercontinental. We, we, we quickly forget. And again, his blase attitude toward that belt made it even stronger, it felt like. like, And the matches that he had and the high-profile matches that he had. This guy might be the most underrated guy in the company. And we talk about Hiroki Goto and saying, hey, you know, if he was in a different time and a different place and a different space, he could definitely be the guy. And here's a guy that was the guy. Let's make no mistake about it. He was the guy. And you, but you had a, a, a roster that consisted of Hiroshi Tanahashi, Tanahashi, uh, Kazuchika Okada, Kota Ibushi, uh, Kenny Omega, uh, AJ Styles at certain points, you know, uh, and, and the list goes on and on. Will Ospreay. Like, <laughs> and yet he still, Still, with all that talent that was there, still was a guy that not only the company relied on, but you show up big time and the fans come out to support. That's priceless. It's priceless. So, yes, the fact that he did go out and died on his sword and uh, went out there and, and really had, a, a, I, I felt like, a great match. Uh, when... Not to say that he didn't have to, but this like the 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 mind and the body you know sometimes don't agree, and and he made it work. I would love to for him to take some time off to heal up, rest up, spend time with family, do whatever the fuck he likes to do, whatever that might look like. I want him to do that. 
because, and I hate throwing around deserves and earns, but like the, name me another person on that fucking roster that has done more for modern day New Japan. Can you argue Okada? Yes, of course. But at the end of the day, you, I, I'm going to throw this out here. You don't think you don't think Naito's gotten some big money offers? You don't think there's a company out there that would be like, "I'll fucking scoop that guy up in a heartbeat." You don't think you don't think that phone rang a couple times? Hard to believe, right? But yet, he he was there and he is there, and he ain't going nowhere. Like that's that to me. Again, that might be stupidity. <laughs> that might be. Uh, naive. That might be, you know, I just don't want to fucking do it. I don't want to live in the States. I don't want to live. I want to stay here. Whatever, whatever it is. I got a girl here. I got a wife. Whatever. Whatever. There are people that left. There's people that didn't. And some people left by choice. Some people left, you know, they would have stayed, but injuries or other things in the company and whatever the case may be. He was there and he was always counted on and he delivered. And I don't think when the Stardust genius stuff was at its drizzling shits and at its biggest, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do with this guy for him to reinvent himself and the company to trust that this is the right thing. I think it says a lot. Because they gave him G ones and they gave him tag to and they gave him they gave him a bunch of stuff, but he never quite fit. And truth be told, I don't feel like he really ever really fit. I don't think he ever really fit. I don't you know, because if he did, I think we would be talking to him, talking about him in a more rarefied air. And and he's a guy that people still think of as um not a top guy and make no mistake about it. He is not only a top guy for a long time. People might not want to fucking admit it. He was the guy. So yeah, I I can't praise him enough. I think what he he did for new Japan pro wrestling is outstanding and help me find another person who you could say the same thing constantly constantly given the short end of the fucking stick and 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 turned fucking lemons into lemonade one of the best one of the one of the best this com- company has ever had how about that one of the best this company has ever had and will still go down as underrated in my eyes I also want to throw some love at the commentary because I thought Walker Stewart and Chris Charlton for, for this oh, match. Fuck them. <laughs> I know you hate doing this. <laughs> I know. Come on, come on. We, we hate it. It's, uh, we're doing it through grit teeth, but oh, they, were, they were really fucking good, weren't they? Yeah. I mean, well, here's the thing he, Walker's becoming more comfortable and he's becoming uh, more acclimated, and every show it gets better and better. And here's the thing Chris is, Chris. When when Chris is in his pocket, he's really fucking good. Again, sometimes if I say again one more time, just cut me off. Um, but he, we all know the complaints that a lot of us have, right? Sometimes it gets a little bit overboard. Sometimes it's a little bit too much fucking frosting on the cake. When he's in his pocket, there's nobody that can touch him. And when they're both on their game, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And I think they're getting more comfortable together. And I think the company as a whole is more comfortable with them. And I think people watching the shows are more comfortable with them. Um, it takes a little time. But he, he's done a good... And here's the thing, too. He's 20-something years old. You know what I mean? Like, that's... I don't care how you want to conduct yourself as a 21-year-old. Or 21, he's more than that. But, you know, as a young 20-ish kind of guy. Like, I don't care what you want to kind of project as you still have self-doubt and you still you you're you don't have the experience you don't have the 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 life experience and 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 you could have you know you could be fresh out of the womb and have a microphone in front of your your face great okay great but still you you 
you learn as you get older and you get experience and being kind of dropped in the middle of this. I think he did very well to start, but he's gotten better and better and better and better and better and better. So, no, I, I, I we bust his balls a little bit because he fucking dogged us, but <laughs> you know, whatever. If I'm being honest and being truthful, uh, like you can't knock the guy for for what he's doing on the mic because he's doing a great job. Oh, one of the other sensational moments from the show. So we had Sonata coming out. We had Shingo coming out to state their claims for their various achievements throughout the year and what they thought they were entitled to. And then Shota Umino came out and <laughs> he got booed. Not only did he got booed, he got the the kaire, the, the go home go chance. Yeah. Where, and, you know, there was just that little flicker in his eyes. He was about, he lifted up the microphone, he was about to speak, and then he, he realized what was going on, and then he put the microphone down. And then he just, there was a little look around that I was just like, huh. So it's like that then, isn't it? And that excited me because it wasn't like the Tetsuya Naito, you know, where he did that big old gulp. Like you could see him, oh, uh oh. There was just like a little it's kind of tacit acknowledgement from Shota where he was just like, okay, I see how things are now. And I'm excited to see where it goes because he's acknowledged those boos backstage. He said he said he's not going to repeat Naito's story. He said he's going to flip the script. So I don't know how. I, I Again, I think it would be a mistake for him to try to copy someone else's path because, you know, we've seen him trying to copy other people. is not going well for him. And I've, I've been saying for months and months and months, he needs to figure out who he is and what his motivations are and, and present something original because fans will smell right through the phoniness if you're copying someone else. They will sniff that out and they will reject you. So there's a real opportunity here for Shota to do something and I don't know what it is. If I, I, I don't have the answers to say he should do this and then he will be successful. But he's at a big crossroads now and he's got some shit to figure out because like Shingo, during this um, backstage, uh, the, 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 in the ring when everyone was coming out to challenge Zach uh, said, uh, I tend to quickly forget details which don't serve my purpose, which is a very funny line. But not for nothing, as you would say, Damon, Shota did pin two former champions and the current champion during the G1, right? That's not an accident. And we've got some stuff announced for Power Struggle where it's going to be, I think if if Zach, I can't, I can't remember the exact stipulations of it, but essentially we're looking at Zach versus Shingo for... Um, the, the, the world title, assuming he defends it against Sonada and then Sonada against Shota Umino. So there's a, a real possibility that we are looking at the shitters, the, the shitter dome, as our Discord have labeled it, <laughs> with, with um, Shota Umino somehow ending up as the challenger for Zach at the main event of Wrestle Kingdom. I so, a lot of work questions. Uh, Morning Progress says, uh, uh, seem, heading, uh, seem to be heading in the direction of Umino versus Zach at Wrestle Kingdom, unless it's feeling a US card. Was this originally you, your spot? Obviously, that means they chose against Suji. Is there faith in heating up Umino? Would hot shotting Oiwa off a great one in Noah, though less familiar, be more productive? And Richard says, Imagine you'll be covering this anime, but what do you think the Wrestle Kingdom main event is going to be now? Also, could Taichi actually win the global championship? Uh, Ruff says, With Zach as champion, it seems like Shota Umino might be the challenge heading into Tokyo Dome. Do you think this will be his Naito Wrestle Kingdom 8 moment? And Max says, where in the hell can they send Shota Umino? He needs to go away for a while. Whatever the hell he's doing isn't working. Uh, Damon, Shota, yeah. what do? I mean, what do? <laughs> I mean, it. I, I think that moment of him hitting that ring, not even hitting the ring, you know, when people saw him walking down the aisle, Oh, like that wasn't a, you know, heel boo kind of moment. That was a, oh, what the fuck kind of moment. That's hard to recover. And and it is, as I sit here with this wonderful microphone, October 16th. That's not much time. Like if you're going to put him in a main event at the Dome, that's that's a, that's a gutsy move. Given the crowd reaction, um, so to me, they do have a little bit of work to put in. And look, I don't want to sit here and say that they're forcing him down our throats because I still think that there is plenty that he gives to the company. We just haven't found it yet. I think there's a boatload of fucking talent. 
I don't know if we've necessarily found it yet. We have glimmers of it. We have moments of it. We have nothing that's too prolonged. And it's like, I worry that a, a, a noisy crowd can really fucking derail someone or it can make someone. Uh, I don't have the answer of what you do with them. But here's the problem. He is not comfortable in his own skin. And that inauthenticness that you uh, say, and we've said before, rings so loud and true here. Because he's not comfortable in his own skin. It doesn't even feel like he's comfortable in his own gimmick. I've never seen kids run away from a person handing out glasses. <laughs> like These little kids are looking at him like, who the fuck are you? I don't want your piece of shit glasses. Get away from me. Stop touching me. He's, it's, 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 you know, he's had a lot of things that aren't necessarily in his favor. And I think one of the biggest things, and whether it's, hey, you know what? He's in the dojo at the crack of dawn and he's the last one to leave and he works hard and he's the hardest worker and all of those things that you would attach to someone who's trying to make his mark and prove that nepotism is playing no factor in this. Right. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a hard thing to overcome because if you have that perception of others or have the perception of you rather that's hard to overcome and you have to work double and you have to work triple and you have to do the dirty work and you have to grind and all those fucking dumb cliches but it's true because if you lose the locker room and if you lose fans and let's call them what they are hardcores like they weren't casual fans that were booing and they weren't casual fans that were moaning. Those are hardcore fans of the product. And they're pretty much saying, nah, not yet anyway. Not yet anyway. Um, think about this. A reaction to a guy challenging who did exactly what you said. Be two guys to, you would think, be right in line for as a challenge and people didn't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> people just didn't want to fucking hear it. And in the ring of all the guys that were in that ring, he came across as maybe the guy who was like, which one doesn't belong here? At least in my eyes, but it's not at, at least in my eyes. It's you know, a lot of people in that fucking building, a, a vocal group. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, yeah, if, if the plan is Zach at Wrestle Kingdom, they got a lot of work to do, Joel. Like, how, like, you don't do that in two months. Less than two months. Two months, we'll call it. You don't do that. How do you do it? And, and what do you do to change the perception that people have? Because I don't know. It ain't working. And, and to me, he's got to find himself, man. Like, he's got to find the thing that he's comfortable with. Because if not, it's going to be a fucking uphill climb, man. It's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb. And the fact, once again, that for as much as we love New Japan's stubbornness sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit like, oh, you, you hear this? <laughs> you hearing what I'm hearing? You seeing what I'm seeing? We got a little ways to go, and it might be as weird to say, because, again, we were all about rocket ship and strap them up and fucking belt them up after COVID and make stars and fucking. I don't know if we're ready, like, like of any of them. He, I might feel the least confident in him. I don't know. Help, help me. What am I missing? Because you're going to put that as a main event? Not maybe not main event, but like technically your 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 big boy belt is the main event of a dome show. Like 
You gonna do that? You got enough guts to do that? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I I do have doubts. I do find it quite exciting though, because now th- this is it, right? His it, oh, if, this is it. If it is him, his back is to the wall. He's got to deliver, and if he doesn't, if he doesn't sort his shit out in the next two months or whatever, there is a queue of hungry young wrestlers who will oh, eat his lunch. No doubt. I mean, th- listen. Let's put it this way, and and take this for what it's worth. The sharks are already fucking circling. <laughs> right? This is a pro wrestling locker room. And as much as we want to believe that it's kumbaya and everybody's fucking rowing in the same direction, everybody in that fucking locker room would not only take a spot, but kick him down the fucking mountain to take that spot. Right. Even if he was like the nicest guy on the planet, then the nature of a wrestling ecosystem is people would be wait for him to fail so that they could pick up the pieces. No doubt. But, a lot of people don't like Shota Umino. Right? There's a lot of wrestlers in that company who don't like Shota Umino and would love for him to fail. So that just adds a little bit of extra spice to it, doesn't it? Where oh, yeah. I, I, I'm i excited. Like, if he does fail, right, well, we'll see who the next guy is. It's not like the company is relying on this guy being a success Correct. in order for New Japan to be a success. If he fucks up, then that's part of the story. And he, he either picks up those pieces and, and makes something of them like a Naito or Yoshihashi or whatever, or he doesn't and he, he goes to the, the back of the line Thank and you. becomes, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say Yoshi. Yeah. I think, I think pre COVID a pre Kobe falling over and, and busting him, his face up. Yoshihashi would be a, an apt comparison. At this yeah. Point. Bag of socks, bag of socks, Yoshihashi. Absolutely. And you're right. It's not like this fucking company isn't, doesn't have a, a, a ton of talent that they're they're building slowly but surely. It doesn't have to be him. They really want it to be. They don't have to be him. Um, oh, I thought somebody was knocking. Uh, yes. I'm so sorry, yeah. that's me. I've got a cup of tea. I thought I'd muted myself, but I hadn't. <laughs> no, like somebody here who's knocking my door. Um, yeah, no, you nailed it. Like, and and we've seen it a trillion times in pro wrestling, where. You know, the son of, you know, didn't matter. Just didn't have it. Didn't work. We tried. But on to the next. So, yes, it is exciting in the sense of this guy better shit or get off the fucking pot. Because I don't, you know, I say this. Do they give them, do, do they give him enough opportunities to shine? Or do they, do, do you think he might get even extra opportunities? consider all things considered. Um, I mean, I think, and I think that's a possibility. And I think that that is looked at unfavorably to maybe people who might think that, Oh, maybe I'm not getting the opportunities if I were in a similar scenario, right? I'm not saying anyone has necessarily verbalized that, but again, if I'm thinking pro wrestling mentality, I'm sure that that thought has crossed more than a few people's minds, right? But once again, this exciting because, okay, but do you do this test, Joel, I guess is my question, on the biggest show of the fucking year? Like, like I don't know if that's, if, if the risk of that is worth anything, because I, because I don't, I don't, like, if you want to risk that in fucking, at, at, you know, wrestling Dantaku, great. You want to risk that at New Beginning? Great. You're going to risk that at a, the fucking Dome on the biggest show of, your, of, of the year? Whew. That's pretty ballsy. Pretty fucking ballsy right now. Yeah, he's not been given the typical booking arc that you would associate with someone being built up as the Wrestle Kingdom Challenger. Normally, Wrestle Kingdom Challenger would be coming off the back of a hot G1 win and riding that wave of momentum as best as you can through the autumn into Wrestle Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So again, it even even sounds like ridiculous me suggesting that he is going to be the Wrestle Kingdom main event challenger. But again, I'm just looking at the facts here that he, if I've got this right, he pinned Shingo and Naito and Zach during the G1. Those are big names. 
Those are big yeah. names. You can't, but, and again, even with that on his side, he's still getting fucking hand waved when he goes in the ring to challenge. <laughs> it's, this is, this is, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think they do it. How could they do it? Do they have the balls to do that? Like, are they just going to put on blinders and say, all right, fuck it. And again, we praise them for putting on blinders. But do they have the guts to fucking do this? Like, they have two months to turn this thing around. I, I can't imagine it happening, man. I just, I just don't see it happening because... I hate okay, to say no, sorry, it. I got that right. He didn't. He didn't beat Naito. He lost to Naito in the G one. Okay, sure. the guys he beat. He in the he did beat Shingo, and he did beat Zach. And I, I still think that is significant. Absolutely, the guy's a fucking world champion. You know what I mean? Whew. Do you think he's ready? Do you uh, do you think he's ready for a fucking main event? Him specifically? No, no. And, no. and to sort of cross back to a question that another reader asked earlier like do i think zach would be the person to come out of wrestle Ki- the first foreigner to win a wrestle kingdom main event since brock lesnar yeah if shota is the challenger then i cannot see dethroning zach and giving the belt to shota at this point would make any sense i think there's something you could do there's a story you could tell with shota having an unsuccessful challenge and having to lose everything and hit rock bottom and have to reinvent himself. There's something you could do something with that. But, you know, even if that is what the intention is, I still think it would be extremely gutsy putting him into the wrestling kingdom main event. Yeah. And I will say this, they're going to need other matches around that match to help support that show. Cause I don't think people are going to buy him challenging for the title. I could be dead wrong, but I, I just don't say it right now. Anyway, well, we better move on to Royal Quest then. So uh, I do want to say that we will have a fan meetup. So oh, those yeah. of you who are going to the show, the venue is the Pauline Arms. So that's P A W L E Y N E arms so that's the name of the pub and we'll meet there sort of between two and three ish so you can buy me and possibly editor dan <laughs> no, definitely editor dan buy me and definitely 100 percent editor dan a yeah. drink uh, and come and say hi and the the last couple of meetups we've done have been great fun like very chilled everyone's really cool and friendly so um that's p- probably the main reason i'm going for the chance to see all the cool people that we met last time and meet some new people so uh don't be scared. Don't be shy. Come over and say hello and chat some wrestling with us. Um, let's go over the card then. I'm not going to preview every match because I can't be bothered, but we have got Young Bloods versus Greedy Souls in a pre-show match. So looking forward to seeing Young Bloods, um, Loiba and Nakashima. We've got Ishimori and his mystery partner having a match against CPF. Um, I think it might be Robbie X just because that just seems to be that there's some symmetry there with Ishimori having wrestled Robbie X in a singles match. I think it was around this time last year. Uh, then we got Kanji and Mina Shirakawa against Danny Luna and Azumi. Then we've got Kosei Fujita against Michael Oku. Yota Suji against Driller Maloney. Shota Umino versus Callum Newman. Very interested to see what sort of reception Shota gets. I am going to boo the shit out of him. I'm going <laughs> You're not gonna make help? sure everyone around me boos for him as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got David Finley against Takamichi Noku, which is <laughs> a Hilarious. strange match. Uh, Titan, Hiromu, and Naito against Mascara Dorada, Robbie Eagles, and Oiwa. Mm. We've got TMDK versus Ishii and Tanahashi, and Zack Sabre Jr. versus Sanada. So, Stacked. a bit of a strange card, but quite a cool one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, a lot of nice singles matches, title defense, uh, a returning champion come, bringing it home. The place is going to go fucking bonkers. Uh, that's a good show, man. Like strange matchups. Like I, lo- I like the tag match. I like Robbie Eagles making a little appearance that I hear. Right. That's a good show. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, in the six man. That's a good show, man. That, I, that, what a trios team that is: Mascara Dorado, right. Robbie Eagles, and Niohe Oiwa. Right. That's pretty. That's. I mean, again, it's a, it's a little fire pro wrestling ish. Just enough, just enough spice on that 
to make things interesting. You're gonna have a good time, dude. That's a good show. All right, that's it. That's it. That's all we got. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Hello, Voices of Wrestling listener, Dave Ryan here. Have you ever wondered to yourself, how many hidden gems are hidden away inside the last years of World Championship Wrestling? Have you ever asked yourself how many tenuous gags can be made about the name Mike Enos? And have you ever thought about what it sounds like for two Irishmen to interpret a very chaotic company through its B-show? The answers to all this and more are just a click away. Check out Days of Thunder every second Thursday on the Voices of Wrestling podcast network.